Hi and welcome to another GP Lite webinar. My name is Pete Swinney and today's subject is setup and tuning of the new flames function. Alright so um, there's been some requests from some of our markets to have our engine speed limiter sound differently depending on some configurations uh, to make some bang and noise and flames. So we've given you a feature to do that with a different, uh, some different settings and the whole thing tied against a 10 position switch to allow the customer to choose not only different engine speed limits themselves um, but also different styles of rev limiter operation. So um, effectively that's done by changing the amount of fuel and ignition cut and the amount of retard that uh, ignition retard that happens at uh, at that time. So without uh, digging in too much more on the screen, we'll go to the live software and go through our options. All right, so we've got our GP Lite software opened here, and probably the first thing to do is to you don't have to have a nine or ten position switch configured but it kind of makes it a lot more useful and allows you to select different engine speed limits. So before we go into the actual function itself, let's configure a multi-position switch up so you can see how that's done and then we can uh, use that during the demonstration. So to go to switches we're going to go to vehicle workbook and here we are on flame switches. Uh, actually sorry before we do that we've got to make sure that we have it allocated in the input output setting so tools edit input output resources we're just going to type flame to search it now uh, there are two switches that are configurable one currently it's called flame limit switch it's going to be changed in the next version of software that you guys will see which will be flame enable uh, you can see it in the software up here flame enable switch just a, it, it's just basically an on off to to turn this uh, whole functionality off so it's not getting in the way of normal operation so if you're not wanting to use this feature then um, you can have a switch turned off or un unconfigured that means the feature won't work. So in this case we're already configured we've got our switch configured and our severity switch which is our t multi position switch and that's allocated to AV8 so let's keep going and that's why actually it turns up here in the uh, configuration screen we can see all the parameters here all right so there's the flame enable switch the reality is we don't actually need a switch here all I've got to do is configure this to be on to give you the demonstration uh, so if we look at the voltage for the flame enable switch it's uh, zero so uh, because it's into an AV and there's not actually anything configured and if we call that falling edge trigger that means it's already fallen below this limit so that means the switch is on and you can see here flame limit switch is on just to show you what that looks like if we have rising edge trigger control S you'll see the flame limit switch now transitions to off because it's not high, higher than the threshold. The voltage, of course, is still low, so it becomes off because it's not taken that rising edge. So we're going to turn this on by doing that and Control S to save. Right, so we have a nine position switch. It's actually a variable pot that I've got here in my simulator. Uh, that's into AV8. So if I twist that pot here, we'll see our flame severity switch voltage starting to rise. Now what we want to do is configure that here uh, so that each voltage on your um, switch will actually end up at a given location. So we need to tell the ECU for any given voltage what, what is that switch position going to be. So before we start, we need our diagnostics. So depending on the setup, of your switch sometimes some switches go down to zero volts so you might want a minus one um, diagnostic all right but if it if it say ends up at 0 0.3 as the lowest voltage then you want something like a 0.1 diagnostic on the low side 
and on the high side something like 4.9 all right and we want a, virtually no filter so we can just leave it without a filter for now and now this is just a matter of putting in the switch into each location and then pushing Q at that location so let's assume uh, it goes something like this as being my first location so I just press Q here it writes that voltage in I go down arrow click to my next location press Q go down arrow go to my next location press Q you can see how we do this quite easily so I'm just kind of adding a bit of voltage each time and then we end up with 10 steps of voltage which will give us our 10 positions 0 and through and 1 to 9 now their tolerance what this means we need to make this a reasonable number so what that means is basically if we have to be within this vo this voltage of this position before it considers it as that number so we look at kind of the steps we've got here and something like 100 millivolts is probably the uh, something we can use to start with so if I swing this voltage through we should see the our flame severity uh, number going up and down to suit okay there it is it's on eight seven six five four three so let me just change the work uh, sheet here to so you can see that that's probably we need to scale that why isn't that working that is here double click we're in the right one here zero to ten okay and we can even pause the data T go back and see what we just went through there there's me going through the, actually the calibration process and there we are on position six now all right so that's working I'm going to press control s because I could see down the bottom we needed a save let's go down to our setup it's under race functions and in worksheet number three flames so um, for some more help that I'm going to give you today you can read how each what each parameter does in detail always F1 is the the key to push for this stuff F1 you get um, some more detailed information on how that particular function or that parameter or table works and some guidelines in some cases as to what to put there alright so the first one we've got here is simply the engine speed limit that you want to use so and if you use nothing else this is quite useful to have multiple engine speed limits depending on what what you're trying to achieve all right so I can have uh, 5,000 5,500 6,000 I could label that on my uh, on my switch if I wanted so all sorts of different engine speed limits uh, and maybe at 7,000 I'm going to make them all the same so from position 4 to 9 I'm going to have a 7,000 engine speed limit and next up we have the maximum cut count uh, so we have a maximum minimum cut count let's just uh, let's bring our position back down to position 1 so we stay just at one location alright so we're here at position 1 all right, so uh, we have a maximum and minimum cut count. Now the idea here is this is to give you some guidelines for the uh, amount of fuel cut that will occur uh, to get obviously the operation of the rev limiter itself, but the um, amount of fuel that goes into the cylinder or sorry into the exhaust is determined by the amount of cuts that occur so the more cutting we do of sorry cutting of ignition then the more fuel ends up in the muffler so we can definitely get to a situation here where the uh, number of cut events 
you can specify is very high so if we cut a lot of ignition uh, the ultimate worst scenario here is the same as turning the key off in the old days where you turn the key off and cut the ignition all together on a carbureted car all the fuel goes into the exhaust turn the key back on and if the exhaust's hot um, it'll, it'll bang but when you turn the key back on the flame goes down the exhaust and lights off the muffler and you can quite easily um, explode and widen, spread the muffler wide open basically turn it into a bomb and make the loudest noise possible alright so uh, care here if you've got the customers uh, good car if you play with these numbers enough you'll get to a situation where you just simply split the muffler wide open alright so the more cut that you uh, invoke during this operation the more fuel will go into the exhaust and the louder the bang and it's not a, quite as simple as that but uh, in general that's wh where we're headed so so that we can make this kind of sound random we have an upper cut limit and a lower cut count limit so you play between these two numbers to get the amount of fuel that you want in the exhaust system and the sound it, it obviously changes the sound of the rev limiter as well so when the cut number is quite low the cycle of the rev limiter is quite smooth and um, so obviously affects the sound of the rev limiter itself as well as the volume of fuel going into the exhaust now we uh, so normally I'd suggest we you keep it simple and start with just leaving a low number all the way across here in your minimum cut uh, count so something like 1t gives us one everywhere and then you can play with your upper end uh, obviously the sky's the limit there's no set point to meet here it's not like we're trying to meet a particular engine speed limit this is all subjective so we're just giving you the ability to play with all sorts of parameters to get to get the result that you're after all right so that's the cut side and then we have we can add extra fuel we haven't needed to use this in testing uh, can certainly make plenty of noise but uh, without it but if you want to add more you have the ability to do so and again um, it's quite nice to test where you set up several tests across the switch here so you can uh, maybe leave the, the two cut counts the same and then experiment with different fuels saves you typing it in on the laptop um, and then we get to our retard count so uh, this is the number of retard events that happen after the ignition is reinstated after a cut event and if the exhaust is really hot you won't actually need to uh, retard the the timing to get the flame to go down the uh, exhaust to light it, light it so but if you're doing it on a cold exhaust or non-turbo um, to get all that fuel lit off then the way to do that is to uh, send a flame down the down the exhaust and the best way to send a flame down the exhaust is to light light the fuel in a really retarded uh, position all right so um, high numbers here mean more retarded uh, ignition events um, and again it's just subjective you play with the number and uh, again read the help to uh, try and understand a bit more about what the computer is doing in the background and now you then you can actually specify again across all the different positions of the switch um, how retarded that timing is so the more retarded you make that the deeper the flame is going to reach into the muffler to, to light it off or out the tailpipe if you've got a straight pipe so so given all those combinations you should be able to hopefully get uh, exactly what you're after and it, I'm not saying it's in an infinite number of com uh, combinations but there's certainly plenty there so there should, there should be enough to, to meet your needs alright so uh, again pressing F1 will give you explanations of what's going on um, I think that's pretty much it we're going to go on to the dyno next and give you a little bit of a demonstration so we're just going to give you a bit of a run through of the flames feature and the GP lights software so uh, we've been through the setup already obviously but uh, let's just have a quick look again so um, there's a range of things for you to effectively play with to get the sound and noise that uh, sound and effect that you want uh, we've got a this is the uh, behavior of the cut count and so the larger this number here basically the 
more cut events that you'll get and the slower the operation effectively of the of the engine speed limiter. You'll know what I'm talking about uh, shortly when we give it a go. So we've got our uh, 10 position switch configured here so we can have 10 entire combinations of engine speed limit here. If you have a look, so I just flick it round so we can have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 000, 8, whatever RPM limits and in each slot we can also change these uh, parameter setup. So for for example one engine speed limit of 3000 revs we have different combinations of cut and retard effects. Alright so right now I've just got all these other parameters set the same uh, across the uh, switch range and I'm just going to flick through these different setups here just by changing the switch once we get going to show you the difference. Most of the time I'd recommend you leave the minimum cut count down at uh, 1. Uh, actually let me keep that consistent here for you. So we're just going to show you the effect of changing the maximum cut count only. Which I think uh, it has a pretty dramatic effect. So let's start her up and give it a go. So you can see the difference there, different ways it controls, held the throttle pretty, pretty steadily. So, um, so we don't need to probably go into that too much more. I'm going to leave it, uh, I'll set it on position 1 and leave it at a maximum of 5. And now we can have a look at how the uh, changing the retard count affects it. So we're on our 1, we've tried that, let's just do it again though. So let's make that five. See that the control doesn't work work as good. All right, and we'll go with ten. Don't actually, seem to change it that much. I'm just going to go back to one. All right. So I just put my foot down a bit further there. You'll see, and we've got a bit bit more banging. We have a look. See the ignition timing when uh, is basically when this is active is just staying set on zero. So if we want to light off more fuel that's inside, we're going to change that uh, ignition timing number here to a more negative number. And let's just go to the extreme, which is min minus 90, and we'll just use a similar throttle position and hear the difference. All right, so quite a quite a different effect. Right, so for playing with all of those numbers you can get lots of different sounds, be different coloured flames and really it's uh, up to you guys as to the combination. So you've got 10 different locations to have it sound any way you like. Alright that's it for now and uh, we'll uh, check back with you soon.